Receiving signal. Mute system boot sequence. Loading. 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 Mute systems online. Transmitting. Hi, I'm Daniel Miller and welcome to the Mute... Hi. Stop. Hi, I'm Daniel Miller and welcome to the Mute Short Circuit at Home TV show. Why Short Circuit, you might ask? Well, nine years ago, as some of you may remember, we collaborated with Short Circuit and The Roundhouse to create a weekend festival which featured nearly every mute artist uh, doing a performance, doing a talk or even sh uh, showing a film. And this is what I'm going to bring to you today. Yes, it's at home. Uh, the artists did uh, some, have done some great videos which I'm sure you're going to really enjoy. And um, there'll be a list of artists coming up here or going across there. I haven't figured that out yet. Um, but um, I'd also like to thank the artists for their incredible contributions and the creative efforts they put into making their videos. I'd like to thank our team at Mute for putting all this together. And more than anything, I'd like to thank you for supporting Mute and more importantly, independent record shops through this difficult time. Don't touch that dial and enjoy the show. shop in Manchester called Rare Records. Can you guess what they sold? Yes that's right, Rare Records. They had a job selling this one though. It was substantially reduced from £7 to £5.95. That's when I uh, realised that I had a great interest in hearing Vladimir Inich Lenin's favourite songs. I've played it once. Another record here I got from Kendall Mills and I got it, it's the original Electra pressing. It was like that thick. Well obviously not literally, but it was the thickest record I'd ever bought. And um, many years later I was uh, introduced to uh, Iggy, the singer, who's a friend of Bernard's. Iggy Pop, Iggy Pop as he calls himself. And I said Iggy that first Stooges record was uh, the heaviest record I'd ever bought, meaning weight. And he said, yeah, man, that was a really heavy record. I don't think he, uh, he understood me. The best bit of going to a record shop is the browsing aspect. Speak louder. The best bit 
of going to a record shop is the browsing aspect of it of not knowing what exactly you wanted but just finding something by accident there's so many categories to choose from take for example the film soundtrack the sound and music that was a big one about his house Eraserhead by David Lynch had a very peculiar soundtrack it was a big influence on Ian Curtis and the music of Joy Division. You won't believe it, but it looks a bit like him. The original soundtrack, yeah, he loved that film. As was Apocalypse Now, featuring the music of Jim Morrison and The Doors, as well as the drummer out of The Grateful Dead. On the other hand, this is the second record I ever bought. It's by Hawkwind. It was going to be the first record that I ever bought. But unfortunately, when I went into the record shop, which was a dingy subterranean cellar in Macclesfield, I only had £2.50 and this was £2.75. I spent ages browsing and pretending to be hip before I decided that I was going to buy this. And then I took it up to the counter and realised I didn't have enough money so I had to go and put it back. And instead, I bought a copy of Melanie's Gather Me, which I immediately sold. I went back the next week and bought this. This record is the first record I got for nothing. I won it in a competition at the Manchester University. The competition was the disc jockey put a record on and said, can you guess who this is? And it was uh, White Riot by The Clash. So I shouted, The Clash! And I won this record, The Clash's first album, for nothing. Imagine my surprise when, a few hours later, I was going to board the train back from Manchester to Macclesfield, when I noticed that the platform was packed with would-be punk rockers, all clutching three copies of exactly the same record. For there had been a bit of a, um, a scam, a record winning scam in that the length of breadth of, Ma the length of, breadth of Manchester, there had been hundreds of competitions and this was the prize. It didn't put me off though, it's a good record. Is this boring? No, I'm laughing. Are you laughing?
just like the river I've been running ever since It's been a long, a long time coming But I know change is going to come Peace of man comes to me By my tongue or the hand I feet Day is illuminated Phases of the moon I ruminate on you Now it's time to share from the dust we rise, beauty we will find In the ashes I am glowing underneath Knew there'd come a day I'd meet my saving grace And I would see your face I knew I couldn't stay hidden from the world I'll make a diamond out of you some kind of change now it's time to share from the dust we rise beauty we will find in the ashes I am glowing underneath knew there'd come a day and be my saving grace and I would see your face I knew I couldn't stay hidden from the world I'll make a diamond out of you
Hi, Martin from A Certain Ratio here. I'm going to explain to you a little bit about the recording and writing process of our latest single, Friends Around Us, how, how, how it came about. Uh, the original idea for the song, and it was originally called Berimba, the working title for the song, was to start off a tune, an idea, using uh, the berimba, which is a Brazilian instrument. So, me and Donald both played a berimba each, recorded the berimba, which you can hear one of them there, and that's the other berimba, and together they make up that beautiful berimba rhythm. And from that berimba rhythm, we added everything else. Uh, we wrote the song in two parts, part one and part two. Um, part two is is uh, came about on the second day, um, and part one, as with all good a certain ratio songs, happened really really quickly. All the best tunes we write in the studio happen like that. So we'd 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 recorded the berimba part. The next bit was to get a drum beat. And in order to do that really quickly, we just put a stereo pair of microphones over Don's kit and recorded him. Very basically like that. So it's an ambient organic sound which really fits with the berimba, berimba riff. Next we added a bass. On the first half of the tune, part one, it's Donald playing the bass. It's a very Kraftwerk influenced bass line. On the second half of the tune, part two, Jez plays the bass, which we'll come to in a bit. Um, to the bass drums and berimba, Jez added um, a chord sequence with a couple of keyboards. Um, something that Jez is really good at writing, really nice chord sequences, which then allow him to, to write a good vocal to. The guitar also follows that chord sequence. It's quite unusual for me to play songs at this tempo, or I say I to play songs at this tempo, but the guitar is quite psychedelic and kraut rock style, which we really liked. Um, then Jez added his vocal. He, Jez sits outside the control room while we're working on the tune and he writes a vocal really quickly. He's got a book of lyrics, he puts bits together and within a couple of hours he's got a really good vocal. What he normally does is come in and record that vocal in the first or second and take at the most right and, and like I said earlier all the best right things now. happen really quickly to that vocal we added the Roland SVC 350 vocoder right it's a vintage right vocoder and it adds that sort of modulation to the vocal as you can hear and then we added this noise which happens joining parts one and part two together and also at the end it's this lovely little Korg monotron okay so that, that was the basis of the first half of the tune um, when we came in the second day uh, we had this bright idea um, to double the tempo of the drums, to take Donald's drums from the first half and double it in tempo and add another couple of minutes to the tune. Don wasn't there yet, I forget what he was doing, but he arrived a little bit later that, that morning. Um, when he came we were really worried about him, what he'd think of his drums doubling up in tempo like that, but he really loved it. And that's what you hear in the second half of the tune. It's almost like drum and bass tempo. So it goes from that sort of tempo to that sort of tempo. So with that faster drum beat, we had the basis of the second half of the, of the tune, to which Jed's added the bass. 
a lot more aggressive than the bass in the first half, but the, uh, it, it suits the double tempo. Um, we added the 101 and the 303 in the second half, which give it, there's the 303. Give it that sort of spacey techno-y element. Then just added this beautiful choir voice. In the second half, which is a really uplifting melody for the, the second half. And then Tony added his sax. Tony's always really good at creating beautiful counter melodies to, to the main melodies, as you can hear here. And there you can, you can hear it, the tune is very, very simple. It consists of berimbo, drums, bass, guitar, keys, vocals, 101, 303 and saxophone. It came together really, really quickly. Um, and I hope that you enjoy listening to it as much as we enjoyed making it. Cheers. <laughs>
To the islands in the stream, they look so drastic. The birds across the sky seem pale and plastic. The warden and the jail are made to look so frail. The innocence of dreams just set sail, just set sail. Lovers breathe into each other's fingers. The river's frozen shore is where we linger. One more high flying bird denied another word. Once more, the road to nowhere never ends, never.
Vincent from the Pop Group of Asia. Uh, I'm here to show you my studio. This is the cabin studio. Let me show you around. Um, here we have all the simps, computer. Uh, here, for instance, is the Oberheim Expander, which I really love. I use that a lot for the, for, for the latest record. There's a Pro 5 there. OB1, again, a nice synth, especially for bass. Um, this stuff here, that's the Obi, Obi section. Um, yeah, that's the Obi section. And here we have the Syrinx, which is from Holland, and a couple of Korg uh, synthesizers. This is the MS-20 and the MS-10. Everybody should have them of those. Yep, and moving on, here's the uh, here's a vocoder plus a VP330. Under here, there should be the JP4, but unfortunately, that went into storage. Oh no, it didn't go into storage, no, it went into repair. So uh, that's being repaired at the moment, uh, but I can't pick it up right now because of the uh, COVID restrictions. Anyway, um, moving on, this is a couple of uh, Moog, mini Moogs. Again, great for bass and all sorts really, and percussion as well. This section here, this is the uh, Juno 106, the Juno 60 and the JP8. Uh, this is my Juno section of sorts. And then actually here is the uh, Roland uh, System 100M, one of my favourite modular uh, systems, only because it's in so much as it's very easy to use. This is always good. Um, moving on, uh, Surge. Uh, these are the ARP 2600s, um, which I love, of course. Everybody loves them. These are ARP sequences which I used a lot for this new record. Uh, this is the Korg PS unit which um, looks really impressive but doesn't sound very good so I don't use that much. Uh, here, here's another synth, the Synthy VCS3 um, which is kind of very unique sounding but it kind of only really makes farty noises so you don't get to use that much. There's some rack stuff here. This is my new stuff. This is uh, all Euro rack stuff. So there's lots of different manufacturers, different synthesizers, great for percussion sounds and well, all sorts really, you know. Um, I've not really got into it because I'm going to have to read the manuals. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, here's the Roland System 700. It's like a version of the 100, except it's bigger. And here, of course, is the Pro One, which I, I love. You know, I use that all the time. So it's dead easy to use. Uh, another Roland, a bit of a move there, a bit of a PPG going on, you know, so uh, all good stuff. Anyway, so what I do is I combine all of these synthesizers, I make sounds of all of these synthesizers, and then I make a song, I make a record. Um, and here's something I put together this morning. It took me about 20 minutes. Um, I'll play you a bit. This is what all of those synthesizers sound like when they're put together. Yeah, get it? Roof coming in. There's a bass coming in. Anyway, you get the idea, right? That's kind of what we do here at the cabin studio. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little mix of that and I'm gonna send it to Andy uh, and he's gonna put some vocals to it. And then at the end of the day, we'll have a song. 
Hi guys, this is Hey Now, I Think I've Got a Feeling by Erasure. a few decades and a lifetime for an individual to grow up. Well, it seems like the same phenomenon plays out with groups. Societies are born, founded, and grow up. It seems that societies go through the same process of being born, growing, maturing, in a process that parallels the growth of an individual, but at a speed inversely proportional to the size of the group. When you take the entire group, ah, 7.5 billion of us, it seems like we are on the cusp of the first stages of adulthood. We are facing problems that we must face all together. As a group, 
we were acting like children. Now, the world has come to a point, we have come to a point, where if we don't act like grown-ups all together, we fall off the bike and scrape our collective knee. Ouch. But that's okay, that's part of growing up, and the process is incredibly asynchronous. If you want to time travel, just go to different parts of the world and different aspects of our own society. We have vestigial bits and bobs of so many past centuries still happening right here, right now, somewhere. We have created a system that places profit before people. That is madness. That is literally placing the focus on inanimate objects rather than animate people. Time is not the most precious thing in the universe. The most precious thing in the universe is people. Placing objects before people, that's no good. We want to live, and to do so we must place people before profit. The welfare of people before profit. This can no longer exist merely as a soundbite. We must immediately translate the idea into positive, effective action. We must, because our destiny has only two paths. The first path goes up and we live. The second path goes down and... I propose we follow the first path. We are at a nexus and it's up to us as individuals and all of us together to choose how we will exit the nexus. Thank you for logging on to Mute Short Circuit at home. Deactivation process initiated. Good. Goodbye. Mute transmission complete. Systems offline.